I think this is really cool. It's something I've been working on all day. Uh, I've been doing a little electrical and stuff around here lately because we got weakness there. Uh, but I don't know what I'm doing. So I've been trying to learn on the fly as I go. And I'm getting there. But I want to share something with you fellers and ladies and gents that uh, I learned it might help somebody or it might even spark somebody that does know something to tell me Had something a better. Over there. It would start, but wouldn't stay engaged. And we have this situation a lot. And it's got to do with the control circuit and I never fully understand it. So I have a heck of a time. Those of you that don't know uh, anything about the circuit, this is your starter. It's your line voltage coming in, these three wires, and that's three phase. So they're always hot. And these babies got, each leg of them's got 270 volts on them. And they're coming here at three pokes on a starter waiting to go. Uh, out the bottom, you got one, two, three, heading out to your starter. So that's ready to go. All you gotta do is make the connection. All right, that's your work side. On your uh, pilot side, you got a wire down here on the side of your starter. That's your uh, uh, auxiliary contact. So when you push the button, the black button in there, the black wire in there gets hot. See that black wire in the back? And there's a wire comes straight off it and comes up here to the top of this coil. That's your hot. On the other side is your ground. Now I'll get to that later. But here's your hot and there's your ground and that ignites your coil. Once your coil slides back and makes contact and you let your finger off the green button, that black wire goes dead. But the wire coming from your start or your stop switch, this here has 120 volts on it at all times. So when this starter engages, it pulls back the auxiliary contact and this wire that's always hot, it then runs through that contactor, meets up with that wire, goes up here to keep the coil energized. So once you start it and make the contact or make the connection on the auxiliary contact, then you stay engaged. Your machine stays running. All right. How, you, how the safety works on this thing is that's done through the uh, ground side and decide the common going down the ground, all right? So here's your common coming out of your coil. It runs underneath all this gizmo and up the back side, and you can't hardly see it back in there. But there's another auxiliary contact here, and what you're seeing on the top with the white, that is your neutral. Going to the neutral, I don't want to stick my finger in the wrong spot, but going to the neutral to wherever to get ground. Underneath it, you can't see it, but it's down there. You just have to take my word for it. Underneath that is the other connection to that wire. So that's another contact. That stays normally, uh, normally it stays closed, so it makes contact for the ground to keep your coil energized. Now, when you have a fault, when you draw too much amps or something goes wrong, you got these three little heaters, one, two, three. And depending on the size of the wire in that coil, the heater coils, is how much resistance it'll take before they heat up. And all these work off of uh, temperature. So it's, got, it's like a resistor in, in your car. So when it gets so hot, it'll break that, when it gets, either one of these legs gets too hot, if one leg's drawing too much or the motor goes bad or whatever, it'll drop that out and open up this circuit right here, going from the white wire to the red wire that comes up here on the negative side of your coil. And then, it, so you lose ground to your coil and it kicks out. And when it kicks out, you gotta come back and reset it and it won't reset till everything cools off and it re, reconnects that uh, circuit on the auxiliary down here. And that's how your system works in a nutshell. I didn't know that. The weather's starting to change. <clears throat> We're going back to logging tomorrow. So, told Big Mama, uh, I need to take time and learn how this system works today because today's the only day I'm going to have to spend on it. And we got the belt fixed, and the belt is running. It actually had a wire, uh, the one where I told you where I got stopped. Let me take this off. All right, 
this red wire that goes to the top side of the auxiliary contact, that goes your stop button. That's always hot. When you want to shut the motor off yourself without an over overload or something, you push the red stop, let's say this is the red stop button. When you push the red stop button in, it opens that contact and then you lose voltage to your coil and then your spring pushes back out and your, your rig shuts off. See what I mean? So your buttons down there are momentary. Your start button's a momentary hot. Your stop button's a momentary cold. See what I mean? And that's Starter how it works. Starter for, that's a size one, say five, 10 horse or whatever. But they're all the same. So this is, here's one for the debarker. It's a 60 horse. Same exact parts, it's just bigger parts. And uh, I don't know if a 100 horse, usually when you get up to that, you're into soft starts anyways. Let me see what this one has. Here's another big boy over here. You know, come here. Come here now. And here's another big rascal here. And there's a Cutler Hammer version of it. That's a size four. That's the debarker starter. It's 60 horse. But you know, once you get up much much higher than that, you're gonna do you're gonna do a daggone soft start anyways. And some people with bucket fulls of money, they'll do a soft start on a 60 horse, you know. But this feel good finally learn the fundamentals of how the daggone thing works you know it's always been hocus pocus in the past and uh just, just knowing how it works man god that feels good bubba feels daggone See, good. here's a square d it's a different brand and it works differently but it's the same thing so uh, this one runs down runs the back side of the you know the heater section ain't on and this will run down to your your auxiliary contact on the side see and this uh one will be a1 and a2 i don't know which one's which or that's on the side here ain't it? but that that helps you figure things out love it and here's a reversing starter there's two starters and there'll be one heater and the heater will be on uh well i guess each side have a heater on it i guess but you know one kicks in and then you know on three phase you just swap two wires so you run your jumper leads over here when you swap two wires around so your motor runs backwards one way you ignite one uh coil motor runs one way not the other coil motor runs the other way that's all there is to it bubba oh here's how it's going okay here's how you get by with only one set of heaters see here's your so it goes through this and these jumper wires jumps over here and then your heater sections on this one so when you hit the start on this one it just jumps it through these wires and on over and that's a size one so that's like a 15 20 horse whatever five ten 15, but anyway 20. that's cool if there's ever a birthday present that i wanted is to finally learn how that circuit works because every starter system works that way it don't matter if you're square d allen bradley or uh cutler hammer or what if you're, they all configured a little different, but your normal contact starters, that's how they work. Now, a soft start or something, that's a little different, you know, but once a guy figures that fundamental fact out, he can look at anything and figure his way through it, you know. But up till now, I've always had to go off of, well, I unhook this wire here, so I'm gonna hook it back up here, you know. So now, you can take all the wires off and I can trace them and figure out where they're supposed to go and what they're supposed to do. So. That tickles me pink. Knowledge is everything. And uh, God, I love that. Have a good one, guys. Hope that helps somebody. If not, if I did something wrong, get back with me. Let me know.